Hi, everybody. Welcome to Amy Nolte Music. Sometimes singers sing right in tune. Bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens. Sometimes they just sing out of tune. There's a choice we're making. We're saving our own lives. Sometimes they're kind of slidey. I'm not aware of too many things. I know what I know if you know what I mean. Sometimes they're kind of purposefully bluesy. Somewhere a queen is weeping. And sometimes they're in tune almost all the time, except for once in a while there's a note that's just not in tune. And I want to focus on that today. I've been, over the last couple of years actually, compiling a list of popular songs that have a note or two that are just in between the cracks of the piano. So say the note is not A and it's not B flat, so it's not la or la, but it's la, just right in between. There's no way for me to say whether or not these artists meant to be out of tune. I don't know if anybody can know that unless we ask them. I don't wanna ask them either, even if I could, because I don't want to insult anybody ever. So for the purposes of my video today, I'm going to pretend like it's purposeful, like it was done intentionally and mindfully with, with a specific reason in mind, because all of these out of tune notes to me are beautiful. And I, I'd like to make the case that they're supposed to be that way. The first one I want to talk about is from The Promise by When in Rome. Let's listen to it. In danger, take a look all around. This song's in the key of C. Then it goes to A minor. Then it goes to F. Then back to C, something like that. When it goes to the F chord, that is the note in question. Listen again. Take a look all around. Clive Farrington is the singer on this song. And I don't know if you hear it like I do, but even though the chord is F major, I hear the note as being somewhere between A and A flat. Take a good look around. Like that. Not round and not round but round, somewhere right in the middle. So the first time, I think the first one is usually pretty much right on the money. But the second time, I feel like it wants to go to that minor chord but the chords don't do that, so I feel like Clive Farrington did it on his own halfway. Because it would have been pretty cool if it went, take a good look around, right? That would have been really melancholy and nice. And I'll be there, but it didn't. And, and when I play it, I need to just play one and five, like that, and try to sing it nice and out of tune right in between those notes. Now, this is a crazy phenomenon, but it's not, it's not anything new. I'm not telling you anything new here. There's actually a term for this particular out of tune note, and it's called a neutral third. That is the interval between a major third and a minor third in the cracks of the 12 tone system that we have. A lot of times it's used to sound bluesy and I think we'll hear that in an example or two that I have today, but it's the most common out of tune note in, by far that I can find in pop music. It happens quite often. The next track I wanna talk about is Then You Can Tell Me Goodbye by the Casinos. Tell me you love me for a million years. Now, the thing that makes this song a little bit hard to talk about is that it's not in A and it's not in A flat. It's somewhere in between. Sometimes that happens 
and because maybe they record the track in A and then somebody says this sounds just a little too quick and so they actually would would slow down the tape or speed up the tape it, that happens sometimes just to decrease or increase the tempo a little bit um, so I'm just going to talk about it like it's in A mm -hmm. Tell me you love me for a million years La da da dee da 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 Here it comes, the part I'm talking about, and I won't play the recording again. If, if you want to hear it again, go back and listen to it. Because as soon as I play the recording again, it takes us out of A major and puts us in like A half flat. And I don't want to do that to your ears. The chord is A here. Tell me you love me. Going to F sharp minor. For a mill coming to B minor. Yen. Now the note is supposed to be E. Years. Then you can tell me. We know that it's supposed to be an E because the casinos are not the only ones to play this song. And on other recordings, I think that it's clear that the note is just a million years. But casinos frontman Gene Hughes sings it a little sharp and it's almost like it's the flat nine on an e chord so it's almost like it's an f tell me you love me for a million years it's almost that but you can't hear that f note in the harmony you can only hear an e chord maybe e7 and he sits between an e and an f just barely i think maybe just 20 cents sharp of e and and creates this tension and, again, melancholy with this note that wouldn't be there otherwise. Tell me you love me for a million years. And I like it. The next song I want to talk about is Good Vibrations by the Beach Boys. This is one of the most iconic, beautiful songs in all of popular music, I think. Not, I mean, we're not even going to talk about the way they recorded it, but genius all the way around. Genius. Carl Wilson sings lead on this track. Carl Wilson, the, the, maybe the most beautiful voice of all the Beach Boys. It's debatable. The song is in E flat minor, at least the bridge is. And it starts with a, ah, oh, I love the colorful clothes she wears. So we have an E flat minor chord followed by a B flat minor chord or the minor five. And that's all we need to talk about really. Here's the note in question. Did you hear it? It's on the trail off. Next note. What is it? What do you hear? La. I think it's supposed to be an F, just the five of that chord. But I feel like it sits somewhere between the five and the flat six. Not uh and not uh, but uh, just right in between it. Listen again. It's the only time in the song where it happens, so it's almost impossible to know what was going on. But again, instead of feeling really settled, and also instead of feeling like a complete crunch, which it, which it probably would if, if we were on that B-flat minor chord, and we had that note really strong, it, it's not, it's between those. So you get a hint at crunchy and a hint at, again, melancholy in my opinion, but not full commitment. I didn't realize that this song was this way until my son Charlie had to sing this solo for his choir one year. And so he was listening to the recording over and over again. And he's like, mom, what is this note supposed to be? And I was like, it's supposed to be exactly what Carl Wilson did. And you can do your best to try to replicate it just to pay homage to Carl Wilson. And that's what he did. Let's listen to a couple spots on the Grateful Dead's Truckin'. Lead singer, Jerry Garcia. This is another case of the neutral third. I think it's intentional for sure, and I think it's bluesy intentional. <laughs> <laughs> 
key of E, and it just sits on E or E7. Which note is it? I don't know. There's different lyrics for this. You got a warrant, I guess you want to come in. It sits right between it. It's cool as heck. Here's another neutral third that happens on Hold Me Now by the Thompson Twins. You say I'm a dreamer. The song is in D, and the line in question is, you say I'm a dreamer. I think it's it's probably supposed to be that. It's probably supposed to be A, A, F sharp, B, A, E, F sharp, like a little slide from E to F sharp, but I don't think he quite ever gets to F sharp. You say I'm a dreamer. You say I'm a dreamer just slightly flat of that F sharp. And what better way to encapsulate the word dreamer than to not do what you're supposed to do, to be a little bit of a rebel, a little bit of a slippy slatty fellow. I like it a lot. And again, it's just non-committal and beautiful. My prayer is to linger with you. My prayer by the Platters is one of the most gorgeous songs I can think of from that era, especially from all of the doo-wop groups. It's in the key of B flat. My prayer is to linger with you. It's a diminished chord that happens right there. So we go from B flat major to G diminished or E diminished. It doesn't really matter. And the note I think is supposed to be a G, but I think that it lands somewhere between G and G flat. Listen again. Is to linger with you. Now, after that happens, is to linger with you, you, whichever it is, at the end of the day. And it goes to an E flat minor six chord right there. At the end of the day. So it finally does go down to a G flat. In a dream that's divine, then it goes to the F. So the melody is supposed to go do da 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 G da 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 G flat da 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 F, which is a really nice little thing to do with a motif is to to just descend the last note of it every time. It's melancholy in and of itself. It's that's the main word today, melancholy. But I like that that it wants to be sad even on the one that's supposed to be slightly happy. It wants to be more sad than it is. My prayer is to linger with, instead of you, you. And of all the chords I've played so far that have, that have a note that is not in tune with the chord, I think that this one between G and G flat on a G diminished chord, fully diminished chord, sounds the most in place of any of them so far. Being a little flat on your diminished chord note might not be such a big deal. You at the end of the day. It's like he's just a little bit further on his way to where he's going because he didn't quite start where he was supposed to. And I absolutely love it. Let's listen to Tin Man by the band America. But Oz never did give nothing to the Tin Man. Maybe one of the songs with the strangest lyric ever. We're not talking about lyrics today, though. Let's talk about, But Oz never did give nothing to the Tin Man. That's how I hear that note. Somewhere between F sharp and G. It's a little bit like another one that we've done because it happens on the minor chord. It's a B minor chord. The song's in the key of D. We go from A minor, Oz never did give nothing to the Tin Man. I think it's supposed to be like that, man. But but every time it gets sung, it's somewhere right between F sharp and G. And I think it leaves it ambiguous. 
And it also softens it somehow. So instead of Tin Man, or instead of Tin Man, if we sang it as a G, if I sang it as a G, I'm just one person here. Sorry about that. Somewhere in between. Oz never did get nothing to the Tin Man. And it's just kind of a fall off. I don't know how intentional it was. Again, but I really like it again. I, I don't know the answer. I like it. It's my theme today. What do you think? Do you hear that one as being in tune or out of tune? That's another point. Like maybe you don't even hear these notes as being out of tune. You might not. I did isolate them and, and tune them. So I'm fairly sure about them, but maybe you never heard it and maybe you never will. And that's fine too. Daydream by the Love and Spoonful is the last tune that I'll address. Now this song was recorded somewhere between the key of C and D flat. And this tune is, I mean, the vocals are just about as slippy and slidey as you're going to find in any song. So many out of tune notes, beautifully out of tune notes. I think that can be said of John Sebastian singing like all the time. But I really like what he does with the word day on Daydream. And I'm lost in a daydream. It's another neutral third. Let's pretend like it was in C. What a day for a daydream. I think he kind of lands on that minor third and almost gets up to the major third by the time the A chord actually happens in the key of C. What a dream for a daydreaming boy. We could talk about that too, but I'm just going to label it as slippy and slidey. I'd love to know other songs that you have noticed that have an out of tune note or two. Um, not particularly songs that, you know, the whole thing is out of tune or blatantly out of tune or that happened and it's fine. But I want to know other songs like this where you think maybe the singer made an intentional choice. I probably missed a few. I know I left a couple out. Oh, one that I left out is Wanted Dead or Alive by John Bon Jovi. I won't analyze it to death, but just listen to it. On a steel horse I ride, I want it. It's another neutral third. And he pretty much always sings it like that. So I'm gonna say that this one was intentional. Let me know what your other ones are in the comments and argue with each other, argue with me. I welcome the arguments and, and also give people a break. You know, if somebody's out of tune, don't just be a musical snob and say they're out of tune right there. Ask yourself if there might be a reason for it, or if there might be some beauty in it. It's the cool stuff in music that doesn't get talked about very often. And I'm glad to have a platform where I can talk about it. Thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time on Amy Nolte Music.